episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Larry. Hey, I'm Austin. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. Uh, uh, Tori has been a, uh, our newest uh, addition to uh, the uh, Literary Gladiators uh, family, uh, and uh, she's been a very uh, uh, positive uh, addition uh, to this family. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's been fun having you. Uh, so, uh, Tori is also into uh, theater. Uh, Tori, uh, what, uh, any uh, projects that you have been working on uh, with regard to? Well, at this point in time, uh, still in the summertime, we've been doing The Tempest, which here in Tom's River, we're starting a Shakespeare Festival company. So, this is the um, inaugural season. So fingers are crossed at this point in time. Things have been very, very good though. So we've been out in the park. It's been, uh, we're doing the Tempest. Did I say that already? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> going in three different directions. But so uh, we hope everybody enjoys. Hopefully, uh, it's just great that uh, literature is becoming a, a staple in the, the area and uh, a Shakespeare festival in our area is uh, exactly, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why he's withstood over 400 years. You know, mm -hmm. his pieces speak to everyone on a broad range, and I believe Shakespeare is the everyman's play. You know, it sounds very intimidating, but as soon as you sit down and you look at the the work, there's music to it. There's a lyricality, and um, that's actually something that is something that's notable in the poem that we're going to discuss right now is how lyrical it is. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Something very simple can have so much in it. So. Well, certainly, yeah. And the poem that we are going to be going over is "He Would Not Stay for Me, Who Can Wonder" by A. E. Houseman. And uh, the uh, it's only uh, a four lines, uh, one stanza. And uh, the starter that I had for this is that the uh, the single stanza poem has been cited as a work of LGBTQIA plus. Sure. <laughs> Poetry, no spectrum. according to poets.org. Uh, do you feel this is a work that fits within that community, and what does it have to say about the time and place? So first I'd like to say, really short poems intimidate me, because I always feel like there's something more in them that I'm not getting out of it. I mean, like, I'm like, like this poem, I write it, there's four lines, and I'm like, okay. is, is that what I, like, is that what I thought it was? Or exactly. there's actually probably some really deep meaning and long story behind it. Um, but no, I, it's really not. Um, maybe there is, you know. There's a story behind everything, I know. Um, but it's weird because I think it, in some ways, yeah, it fits into this category um, because A. Houseman wrote, wrote this poem, because I looked him up um, afterwards to kind of, you know, get a little bit about him and whatnot. Um, and it seems pretty clear that this poem was written about another man who he had fallen in love with who didn't reciprocate those feelings. So I think in that way, yeah, it absolutely fits in. But I also think it's, it's I mean, it's so short and, you know, the most specific thing in it is what type of gendered pronoun is used. Yeah. So apart from that, I mean, I think it's a pretty universal poem. I think everyone can read this and kind of... The exact term that I was going to use is universal because I think everybody's been in that situation of, yeah. of love loss, of finding that one person that you become infatuated with and then you part ways and it's the, the very last two lines, I shook his hand and tore my heart asunder and went with half my life about my ways. So you lose a part of yourself but you kind of gain something of yourself because it becomes a little bit different with those interactions within our lives. So everybody at one point or another, be it platonic or romantic on any vast spectrum of that, you lose a little and you gain little. Mm -hmm. you know, that's something that's addressed mm -hmm. here. And that's why I actually ended up looking it up because I read it and I was like, that it, I was like, it really feels like it's kind of a romantic poem, but it also feels like it could be, you know, platonic because um, I never am a huge fan of the term of like more than friends because sometimes there are friends in your life who mean more to you than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's my case. You know, I have some friends in my life who really are family to me, and if I ever, you know, fall in love and end up with somebody, I can see these friends being just as important to me as the people I might have romantic relationships with. So that's why I ended up looking this up because I was like, I can't really tell if this is supposed to be romantic or if it's really supposed to be platonic or if it's kind of just 
it means whatever it means. And I think that's what, again, that's what makes it so universal is its simplicity, is the fact that it's four lines, very spelled out, very, you know, it's very transparent, what it's supposed to be about, and that's what makes it so accessible. I would argue that it's, uh, I would argue in favor of it being uh, romantic just because of the tone and the word choice. Uh, the, uh, the first, the fact that uh, when he says that he would not stay for me to stand and gaze, I think that these are things that he himself is doing. And when you gaze at somebody, it's, it's, it's an intense uh, feeling. Uh, and then the, uh, the fact that uh, shaking his hand uh, tore his heart apart and uh, half of his life uh, uh, went about their way, which he himself was half of his life. Uh, he felt that uh, that was, uh, this is somebody that uh, he himself was passionate about. And then you also got to look at uh, the time and place because this is probably as much as they can yeah, the fact that he the, the he pronoun in there and kind of almost toes the line, the, that was what, the 19th, 19th century. 19th, 19th, 19th. Yeah, there we go, 1920s, sorry. So, yeah, that's oh, that one. Yeah, um, I don't know if this is from the I, I, I think it was from last poem. So, yeah, 1922. So, the 1920s, so the early 1920s, uh, you know, that was a very taboo thing. So this was pretty sensational for being a, a man using a, a male pronoun in a romantic or in a, any sort of relationship in that sort of way. So, but I will have to counter with, um, you know, showing affection, physical affection, and I don't mean, you know, on a sexual aspect. Uh, men kissed, men would hug, that kind of stuff was actually seen in movies. You know, that, that was depicted in the cinema up until, I want to say, the 1940s or something like that. That was, uh, you know, comrades would embrace. So, yeah, and, and male camaraderie was, was expressed differently than it is today. So knowing his background, it's, you know, sensational. But if you were, you know, in the 1920s, 1930s, Joe Schmo off the street read that, you're just somebody who, you know, lost a dear, dear friend who was extremely um, admired, which I, I can definitely say I've had friendships where, uh, you know, they're the two of us are as thick as thieves, and you know something happens in life, and we part ways, and it hurts me. You know, I, I still think about it. And like I lost that friendship because that was a an important bond in my life, and uh, there was nothing romantic in it at all. But I loved them like a, a sibling, and you know they're not in my life anymore. I think that there's definitely a lot to this uh, this poem. I think it's it's meant to be meaningful, but I feel that. Um, at the same time, I feel that uh, the reason that uh, I think the handshake is the uh, the most that can be uh, seen as acceptable for that time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I really don't, I see it as uh, he has stronger feelings than just a uh, dear friendship. That's what I thought, but sometimes I read that. I'm, sometimes I read way too into things. I think everything's gay, and then I'm like, oh, newsflash, the whole world's not gay, Austin. Um, so that's why I was like, I'm going to Google this, just make sure I'm not reading too into it. Um, but also talking about like LGBTQ themes in the, the poem, I think its importance is depending on how you're reading it. I think if you're reading it for yourself, to see similarities in yourself, um, it isn't so, it's not something that you have to kind of feel or you might not even recognize. Um, but I think if to understand the poem as it relates to A.E. Houseman and the feelings he must have been feeling, you have to put those things in. Because to, you know, love and to lose is difficult for anybody, but I think especially for him in this world, like you said, there's all these, you know, restrictions on him and how he can show his affection and who he can be in public at that time. Um, so I think for him, that heartbreak is perhaps even more devastating. Um, I, uh, so like I said, I think it depends. If we're trying to understand his own feelings, I think we have to take all that into account. But if we're seeing how it relates to ourselves, I think we only take that into account if it gives more meaning for ourselves. I so think that, it's a, that's the beauty of the poem, is it, it is its duality in, you know, the author versus the reader is how it's um, translated. And also just the, um, 
the use of um, imagery in a handshake. It's a termination, but it's also, you know, it, it can start and stop something. So it's the beginning and the end of something. So that encapsulates in one, one sentence of, I shook his hand, you know, that's a whole history in, you know, palm to palm contact. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple. It seems to me that, uh, you know, it's like, there's an element of it that's kind of idyllic on his part, like where he's like, that's what he would like is for this guy to just allow himself to stand around and be adored. Like, I mean, what is the line, Josh? The second line? Um, he would not stay for me to stand and gaze. That's, you know, what, what, to stand and gaze. That's, uh, it's not, it's not something that, as an object, a person yeah. is. A person is not something that you just stand and, and gaze at, right? It's kind of like the idea that, of putting it on a pedestal. I or think that that can mean so many different things, too, because you have, uh, uh, I think that if you admire somebody uh, in that romantic kind of way, uh, you uh, you think so much about them. Uh, and also, that furtiveness of, yeah. I can't say that I love you, you know, out loud, but, um, you know, the, the furtiveness of I can only stand and gaze at you. Um, not being able to say the feelings that they want to say to one another, and that can, can, that can be something that um, is a, a, a turnoff in a relationship. So instead of the secret findings of, you know, yearning for each other and sighing across the room, it's okay, you know, we have to move on. I want something else in my life. So, and the handshake and goodbye. I also took the line a little different. Um, I kind of took it as like, you know, the decision's already been made and he's not going to stay for any houseman or the speaker, I should say, because the author's not always a speaker. Yeah. Um, but I, I took it maybe as like, this person's not going to stay long enough for the speaker to get one last look at them. Like, they already know they're going to leave and they're just like, I wish you could have stayed so I could get one last look at you before you okay. leave. But instead, you're just like, I don't know, I'm not going to stay. Here's a handshake and I'm out. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I, I hear what you all are saying, but I took it more as like, like, the speaker already knows where this is going, and it's just like, I wish you could stay one more time so I could look at you before you go and, and remember this moment, but instead, like, I know this has to end. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I, you hear that sometimes with people who are like, you know, in movies and stuff, they're just like, oh, it like, can never end, this moment can never end, but yeah. like, they know it has to. Yeah. So I, that's how I had taken it. Yeah. I, well, yeah, I, I can only say what, what I thought when I read it. And like I said, I kind of got that idyllic tone, but then listening to you guys talk about it, it's like, well, it's interesting because, like you're saying, in that in that time place, you know, where you know maybe that that's that's all that they could, you know, all the people that could, that felt that way could uh, could do is is kind of like have that kind of, you know, wordless relationship. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. This is only one moment in time, too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's the other thing, you know, we have no idea. And that's what I like, like, going back to the simplicity, that's something I like about it is, we have no idea the story of these two people, and because of that, it's so much easier to map it onto our own lives. You know, the it's story an that actual before. instance of, you know, two people in that moment, or is it an encapsulation of an entire relationship of, like you said, objectification, where the one person did not want to become this object to be adored and put on a pedestal, so they had to part ways, or is it legitimately just, you know, an actual, like, standing there and gazing at you sort of aspect for it. So that's the, the fun of simple, small poems like mm. this. One thing that I, I think about Roy Orbison's self-crying, where it's about him uh, uh, coming across a former flame of his, and uh, they uh, engage in a brief uh, moment of uh, gratification and uh, then they part ways and it leaves him, uh, uh, as the course uh, mentions, uh, crying over them, mm -hmm. which I think a lot about that when I look at this poem because uh, they interact for a brief moment, but that brief moment has a heavy effect on the speaker and uh, it, Pretty much to him is uh, the way he said it, apocalyptic. Anybody have any uh, final thoughts? I still short comes into the meaning. I always think <laughs> there's a type of meaning that I'm not getting. So. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely means something, and I think it really is stronger uh, than. It gets you to think. Yeah, yeah. it does get you. You could say so much about uh, it's the whole great things coming in small packages. 
you know, small poems give you a vast space of thought. So that's, I think, it can be a little intimidating. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm already that. Uh, I will leave a link down below to uh, this poem. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, Houseman's uh, collections. Uh, there's uh, a Shropshire Lad and also uh, these last poems. Uh, so be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.